Alright guys, and welcome to my top 10 leveling tips to stop you from leveling like an idiot. Guys, there is no need to pointlessly waste your time or cause yourself unnecessary frustration while just trying to chill out and play Classic WoW. By the end of this video, you'll be leveling like an enlightened Buddhist monk who just found Ozzy Osbourne's buried drug stash. Also, I've really tried to mention 10 totally new things that I've never mentioned before in previous videos. First being one solution to a very irritating thing in vanilla. And that's the fact that quest items on the floor don't glow and sparkle, which means they actually are quite difficult to find when you've got the ground clutter setting turned up, especially when you're trying to find herbs as well. But luckily, this week aura, what it does is it adds a button to your minimap where you can just toggle that graphical setting on and off so it totally turns down the ground clutter therefore making it much easier to find quest items on the ground. Guys, if you feel like you're falling behind in Fresh Classic, by far the biggest experience per hour is obtained in Vanilla WoW by simply doing the perfect questing route, which is luckily provided by the world record hoarding speed levelers who created Rested XP. If you don't believe me, you can get the add-on for free right now up until level 30, and if you want to get the full guide, Use my discount code MetagoblinFresh and click my link in the description for a little cheeky 15% off. Secondly, this is more of a tip for people who work from home, but it's so easy to make gold while you're not really playing the game, okay? If you have the luxury to basically work throughout the day and ha you know stick World of Warcraft on your second monitor and log in now and again, then this is a great way to basically start making passive gold while you're not actually playing the game you're, you're like still at work just don't tell your boss about this one but you can flip things on the auction house for effortless gold with your professions now the best way currently is with smelting or tailoring to make bags since these two things are always in massively high demand all you do is buy raw mats off the auction house do the craft and then stick it back on the auction house and wait for it to sell right now because it's you know fresh server launch things are selling very very quickly Personally, I don't have a lot of time to play the game right now, and I've been doing this tactic with buying raw copper and tin ore and just going to make bronze bars and just doing it throughout the day while I have a little time. And I'm actually making about three gold per day, and I'm only like level 16. It's slowly adding up for when I do finally have more time to play. Thirdly, I want to show you some of the very hidden and cool features of Liatrix Plus that I think are very underrated and unappreciated. First of all, you can widen the quest log. People always ask me about this in the comment section. It's Leatrix Plus. There's just a simple button that says enhance the quest log and it makes it wider so it's just easier to see. You can also do this with the profession menu and you can add wowhead links to every single quest at the top of the menu. So if you're stuck on a quest, you can just quickly copy and paste it. You can also enhance the dressing up window, which is kind of cool. You can add the ability to add other players to it so you can see what they look like. You can remove everyone's gear. You can switch between different animations. And you can even add a volume slider to the character menu. And you can show class colors in the chat. And there's so much more features like that. By the way, guys, if you are looking for a really good weapon progression guide for every single class in the game, even class to stats ticks, I've made a really good spreadsheet. All subscribers can get instant access to it. All you got to do is subscribe to the channel, go to my channel page, and you'll see it in the description of my subscriber-only video. Getting bags early on in the game is very important because every time you have to make space, you are deleting potential gold, which is not great for when you're saving up for your mount. There's many bag options early game that not many people know about. The first few are fairly known, but they're very easy to obtain from quests. We've got some 10 slotters for Deviant Hides quest. That can be obtained by both the Alliance and the Horde, and also the Night Watch, which is a 10 slotter for Alliance. You've also got the Felsteed Bags in Shadowfang Keep if you want to go and farm that, and you've got the quest Digging Through the Use for Alliance again. Now, another interesting option is the Sturdy Lunchbox, which is a 12 slotter, and it drops from Venture Co. Foreman has a 1% chance to drop. It's not a bad idea to grind on this mob while you're saving up for your mount because they're also not a unique bag. You can get as much of these as you want. You definitely also want to do the old man quest for the four pelt bag. This is a really nice 14 slotter. If you want to get this with the Cordello's Riddle quest, which is a bit of a quest that requires you to just travel around the world, 
but it does eventually result in another 14 slot bag. And then before you hit max level, you, you want to start progressing on the quest line that rewards the Demon Hide Sack, because that is a really good 16 slotter, and you get it from the Fallen Hero just outside the Blasted Lands. Now, while you're leveling, you shouldn't neglect your professions. They can be so fun for leveling and help you make a lot of gold along the way. Engineering is probably one of the most fun, particularly for World PvP and Stranglethorn Veil, because most people won't level it up, and that gives you an edge. Also, it's so useful to use bombs and stuff and target dummies while in a dungeon. Plenty of opportunities you're going to absolutely save a group from wiping. It's also important to pick the right capital city to level up your professions because you don't want to be running around to the anvils and the forges and stuff like that every time that you're just trying to sit at the auction house to level up your professions, which is why I would recommend for Horde to chill in Thunderbluff. Thunderbluff is definitely the best capital city for leveling up professions overall because the auctioneer, the mailbox and all of the anvils and smelters are all just in one little area. The best option for Alliance has to be Ironforge because the forge area isn't too far away from the main trade center hub. But when you're leveling your professions, you want to totally ignore leveling guides and instead get the add-on Auctionator, which will scan your auction house and tell you what you can craft that will basically make profit on the auction house, like we mentioned earlier, when you flip it back onto the auction house. So the idea is... You just create items that are going to make profit on the auction house and that way you get all of your money back and maybe even make profit. Like at level 16, I've already got me mining and engineering to around level 150 and I haven't spent a penny, technically, because I've been buying stuff for the auction house, reselling it, and I've actually ended up making more gold than I started with. Remember, when you're out in the open world questing, it is important to invite people for quests because one, you're not going to waste time waiting around for the mob to respawn, and also it's good to just not be a d and try and steal mobs by being that like really stubborn loner guy who always tries to do quests on their own. Also, making friends is always useful for when you want to later do a group quest of some sort. Or making a dungeon group, for instance. You will never regret making friends in Vanilla WoW. It is, by heart, a very social game, so you can only benefit really from being social and open-minded. Now, when you do go and do those dungeon runs, you want to get the most out of those dungeon runs as possible when it comes to farming experience, but also gold and potential really good armor and weapon upgrades. So that what you want to do is obviously get the best dungeon quest, preferably all of them, before you do that dungeon run. But obviously, it's kind of like a pain in the neck to always be going on wowhead all the time to check things. I mean, you can do that. Or you can just get the add-on Atlas quest that will show you all the quests that you can get, down to the pre-quests that you need to do, and the precise coordinates in the game where you obtain those quests. Just make sure you have Atlas installed also, as it is a plugin for Atlas. Remember that extra quests can sometimes be obtained in your capital cities. Codex Light is a questing add-on that will show you exactly where you can pick up these quests in your major cities. It's always worth going to see what on earth that quest is, because it may have a quest that is completed in the next area that you're going to go and do quests in anyway. So it's basically just free XP because you went and picked up a quest. Codex Light, by the way, is a much better questing add-on. It shows you where spawns are on the map way more accurately. And you pair it with Liatrix maps so you can zoom in even more. Now, don't think that a DPS meter is totally useless for leveling because it isn't. Now, a leveling guide can't really give you the best optimal rotation or playstyle on how to play your class across the board for every single level while you're leveling a vanilla WoW, because at different levels, you have differently ranked abilities, which means they will provide a different amount of damage. So the big brain way around this is to use a DPS meter to measure your kill times of mobs and look at your DPS to compare different rotation patterns to work out what is the best and the most efficient way to kill enemies at your current level. And lastly, I want to talk about saving gold. The first usual tip is obviously to be making bandages and selling them because it increases the vendor value of cloth. But it's also worth actually checking the cloth prices on the auction house because it very likely will be more than what you can vendor bandages for. You should also always check auction house prices on white and green items before vendoring because sometimes you can make just that little bit extra silver 
Obviously, like we've mentioned before, you can also flip your professions and make sure you're always keeping something on the auction house that is later going to you know, sell for a little bit of silver. You can cook food to increase the vendor value or just use the food instead because obviously you sometimes get meat and stuff that can't be eaten without being cooked. But when you cook it, then it turns into something that can be consumed to restore your health. Now, if you are just buying food always off the innkeeper, you are wasting a lot of gold. So yeah, get your cooking leveled up, guys. Don't be lazy because it will save you a lot of gold in the entire span that it takes to get to level 60. Alternatively, also, you can ask mages for food instead of buying it. Now, remember to only rank up absolutely essential abilities. You shouldn't be ranking up absolutely everything when the second you can learn it because you will always basically have no money. The add-on what training will help you see what skills are coming up, how much they're going to cost so you can plan ahead. If you haven't already, be sure to get a sell value add-on that shows you the vendor value of all items in the game. And you particularly want this for when picking a quest reward because obviously it's a no-brainer to pick the quest reward that sells for the most. Before you hit level 40, normally I start doing this around about level 35, 37. I will grind on beasts that have really good trash vendor value and on humanoids because obviously humanoids have a bit of raw silver and also cloth that you can sell on the auction house. And in general, guys, while you're leveling, sometimes you just got to be stubborn and go and do a vendor run. Yes, it's going to deter from your leveling speed, but I think it's worth it always to never be in that situation where you are filling up your bags entirely and literally deleting gold from your inventory. It's best to not just optimize your XP per hour, but also how much gold you're making per hour. Because think of the leveling time that you are losing if you don't have your mount precisely when you hit level 40. By the way, the add-on Handy Notes NPCs will show hidden vendors out in the open world. You'd be surprised how many there are, so you don't always have to run back all the way to a capital city or a town. But anyway guys, those are my top 10 tips for leveling in fresh vanilla WoW. My name is Metagoblin, to my next video, ciao.